Hello class, Mr. Fino here. This is unit two, lesson three on exploring four empires of Mesopotamia. And here we have a picture of, I believe an Assyrian soldier um, on a horseback with a bow. So in this section, you will learn about the most important achievements of the Mesopotamian empires. And there are four main empires that came after the Sumerians, uh, which we'll see uh, in a bit. But uh, some of these pictures represent some of the rulers of, of those empires, namely uh, Sargon, Hammurabi, uh, and Nebuchadnezzar. So the first question is, why did ancient Sumer fall? Um, had to fall for, to lead to these four other empires. And so because the city-states were always fighting over land and water rights, which we talked about previously, they were, they were vulnerable to attack, which, which makes sense. If they're always fighting with each other, they couldn't focus on defending themselves the right way. So that led to the Akkadians, uh, who were the group that conquered them. So again, fighting over water rights and eventually the Akkadians, which this picture on the right is some artwork of the Akkadian army. So what were the four empires that ruled after Sumer? That would be the Akkadian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, and the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Um, and this picture here just shows a timeline of when those, um, when those groups uh, took over Mesopotamia. So first was the Akkadian from about 2300 to 2100 BCE. So that's about, you know, 4,300 years ago, 4,300 years ago. Then came the Babylonian Empire, followed by the Assyrian Empire, and lastly, the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And these pictures also show where they ruled, so you can see um, the colors, what, uh, what the land they, they ruled over was. So first, who ruled the Akkadian Empire? Uh, this would be King Sargon. And he was a strong king and a skilled general. Um, he used effective military strategies and tight army formations to expand his empire. So like his army would kind of join together very tightly. And I believe they would all have um, uh, shields and then they'd be able to attack through the gaps. But uh, he just, one thing he did was he destroyed walls of city-states to prevent them from rebelling, right? If they didn't have walls to protect themselves, um, you know, it made them hard to, uh, to rebel because then they were, again, they'd be vulnerable to attack. And lastly, Sargon built a capital city in Agade um, by collecting and using tribute from conquered peoples. So tribute is when, after you take over... Um, a people through warfare, they will give you tribute, like kind of like pay pay you um, after they've been ruled over. So that's how he built his capital city. Uh, the next question is, what was life like in the Akkadian Empire? So for a long time in in the empire, the Akkadians continued using the established Sumerian achievements. So they continued to use the irrigation systems that the Sumerians had developed. They continued to use cuneiform, which is the written language of Sumer. And they even used the same gods and goddesses. Um, but eventually, you know, they, they established their own stuff. Uh, the Akkadians were known for their skillful three-dimensional sculptures um, and steels, which were scenes carved on stone, like you see on the right and the left. Uh, the left, I think, is some you know, conquering scene where people are all kind of getting stepped over and, 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 and dominated. Um, um, and then after Sargon died, subsequent rulers found it too difficult to manage such a large empire and it fell. This is going to be a common theme. These empires are massive. So once rulers that really had things together fell or died, then the people that came after just couldn't couldn't handle it. It was too much. Uh, next question is, who ruled the Babylonian Empire? This is Hammurabi, who ruled Babylon 
a city-state in Mesopotamia. So he actually ruled over a city-state, and then um, he led them, he, you know, against other city-states, and ended up uh, conquering all of Mesopotamia. And after he did that, he named Babylon the, the capital city of the empire. Um, so this is Hammurabi on the left. This is what Babylon probably would have looked like. And if you've ever heard the story of the Tower of Babel, Babel comes from, Babel is just Babylon. And that's a story from the Hebrew Bible, um, which is the Old Testament um, with, with stories like Noah's Ark and Adam and Eve and Moses. This is just another story from the Hebrew Bible, uh, the Tower of Babel. Uh, so what for what is Hammurabi best known? He's best known for his code of laws, which he used to unify the empire and preserve order. So, you know, if everyone had to follow the same laws, then there's some sort of form of unification in, in the empire. Uh, he based the law on the authority of the gods. He said, you know, this came from the gods. This is not just me. It came from the gods. So that made it hard for people to argue with it. And the laws are written, written on a steel and put on public display in a temple. So um, this on the far left is what that would have looked like. You can't see the writing, but cuneiform below below the scene of Hammurabi and this god he's talking to. But putting it on public display would have made it so that you know people they could read it, they could see it, and it was common knowledge that they were following the laws. I believe this the steel on the left is in a museum somewhere. So what did Hammurabi's code address? Uh, the code covered many situations, including trade, payment for work, marriage, and divorce. Uh, the code spelled out punishments for crimes, such as stealing or causing injury. So, for example, if you would if you stole, you would likely get your hand cut off. Um, rules like uh, punishments like that. And then another example of a um, a punishment for a crime would be. If a poorly built house collapsed and killed the owner, the builder would be killed, right? So if it was determined that it was poorly built and someone was killed inside, then the builder would be killed. But, and this is where Hammurabi's code gets a little bit dicey, if the son of the owner died, then the builder's son would be killed. So the builder's son had nothing to do with it, but they, they equated that with it being an equal punishment. So we'll learn more about that. Uh, what was life like in the Babylonian Empire? Hammurabi built roads and a postal service, kind of like you see in the top left here. We, the way mail is delivered, uh, he established that. You know, and they probably made good use of those roads. Uh, irrigation systems were well maintained for for farming. Uh, Babylon was a center for trade along the Euphrates River, so that's important. You know. People could go and come on, on ships and boats and, and trade with, with Babylon. And um, artisans could get materials from places like Egypt and um, to, to make their stuff. And writers were able to write historical poems. Um, because of the laws, even slaves could keep their wages, own property, and buy their freedom, which is pretty impressive. And this picture on the right is artwork of uh, Babylonian slaves. And, and lastly, women in Babylon had more rights than other ancient societies. A lot of the laws protected them. They could own their own property and keep their own money. So, uh, you know, they weren't, you know, it's an ancient civilization. So they're not as progressive as we are today, but they're more progressive than lots of other ancient civilizations. Uh, next we have, what was the Assyrian Empire? Um, so in the Assyrian Empire, they believed their kings were special beings and built palaces and sculptures in their honor almost like gods. Uh, they developed the first aqueducts, which helped bring water from 30 miles away. So think kind of like large scale canals that where water could come from very far away. So they'd have drinking water. Um, in art, the Assyrians were known for their bas reliefs on palace walls. I'll show you a few of these in the next uh, slides. Um, and because the empire, again, was too large and the army stretched too thin, it eventually fell. The same theme of the army, the, the empire being too big to kind of govern. And again, and also, you know, the army was fighting all, all over the place in the empire that they just couldn't, they couldn't keep, keep it together. Um, so here are a couple of uh, 
as it says here, bass relief um, pieces. Um, I think on the left, he's probably fishing. On the right, we have a couple people maybe trading or drinking. I'm not sure. Uh, so next question is, who ruled the Neo-Babylonian Empire? So we already saw the Babylonian Empire. Neo-Babylonian literally means new Babylonian Empire. So Neo just means new. And the most famous king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire was Nebuchadnezzar II. And he was a ruthless military leader. Uh, he conquered many groups, including the Israelites, or also known as eventually the Jews. And he took them captive in Babylon. So this picture on the far left shows that he marched them from their home to Babylon and, and took them captive for a while. And this is known as the Babylonian captivity. Um, he built massive inner and outer walls that were so big that two chariots could, could ride across and pass on top of them. And you can kind of see that on the far right here, these massive walls. Uh, lastly, they also built moats around cities with, with removable bridges. So the reason that would be useful is if you could remove the bridge, then there's no way into the city. If there's a wall and a body of, you know, this kind of river, then there's no way inside. It'd be very difficult to get inside. Uh, what was life like in the Neo-Babylonian Empire? So Nebuchadnezzar rebuilt the ziggurat, which is a massive religious structure. And he also constructed the famed Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which is known as an ancient wonder of the world. And you have a picture of that in the center here, uh, which had amazing greenery on his palace rooftop, with a specialized watering system to keep everything alive. And the bottom left here is a ziggurat. And uh, the Babylonians created the world's first sundial and potentially initiated the 60-minute hour and the seven-day week, which obviously we use those things today, you know, 60 minutes in an hour and seven days in a week. Probably wouldn't have been the same, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but a similar system. So uh, the summary of here of the lesson here is that in this lesson, we learned about the four empires that rose to power in Mesopotamia after the Sumerians. All right, thank you.